Hello and welcome to another jewelry making video brought to you by KeepsakeCrafts.net. Today we'll be making this pretty bracelet in shades of purple. The designing is very simple. It's really all in a, a matter of what materials you choose. So to make this bracelet you will need an assortment of focal beads, bead caps, spacers, and Swarovski crystals. What I have are 20 millimeter by 15 millimeter gemstones, these purple ones. And then what's interesting are these caps, these bead caps are actually oval or square in shape, so they fit right onto these flat shaped um, stones. So I have three of those and six bead caps. Also I have six six millimeter Swarovski bicones in clear and purple color that escapes me at the moment. I also have eight four millimeter round spacer beads and four two millimeter round spacer beads and then at the ends I have four four millimeter Swarovski bicones. You'll also need bead stringing wire. These are gemstones and crystals so they're kind of heavy so I'm using a medium weight bead stringing wire, uh, 0.015. You will be very glad if you get these little bead bugs. It's just a spring with handles. It clamps onto the wire so that if you're clumsy like me, you're not dumping your beads all over the place. So just, this was a scrap of wire. That's why it's so long. But you just want to cut yourself a nice long piece of wire. Your average bracelet is around seven to eight inches. So you want to cut yourself a piece of wire at least 15 inches just so that you have plenty. To finish up the ends you'll need a clasp, two crimps, two wire protectors, these little horseshoe shaped things, two crimp covers, and a jump ring. So the first step in making this bracelet is just designing and that's one reason I like to have a length of wire that I'm working on because I know that this is going to go in the center and I won't have to take every bead off if I change my mind. I think when I started I had these two and then I needed a little more length so I only had to take off these beads and then added another one. You'll notice that every Swarovski crystal has a bead in between it and anything else, a little spacer bead. And that's to protect them because they are crystals and with too much friction, I mean the bracelet's going to be bent round as it goes around your wrist. And we don't want any cracking. These crystals can crack. Ask me how I know. So what you'll want to do is allow about an inch for your clasp and then you'll want to measure how long you want your bracelet to be. Measure around your wrist. Now keep in mind if you have a very wide bracelet it's going to sit further up your wrist which is bigger around than right down right next to your hand. Also right next to your wrist is one measurement. So here this is the inside diameter of my wrist. But if I have thick beads, if they're say as thick as my thumb, I'm going to need a length the outside diameter measurement in order to comfortably go around my wrist because those thick beads take up space. So my wrist is about seven and a quarter here and I'm going to make this bracelet seven and a half. So I want to have six and a half inches of beads strung and that's what I've done here. And that's just for you to do with what you have I'll certainly give you a supply list on the blog post that goes accompanies this video, but use what you have. Oh, I can't believe I left that off. Uh, so anyways, so once you have all your beads strung, then it's a matter of just finishing up. First thing we're going to do is slide on a crimp, and then I'm going to slide this through this little horseshoe shape thing. Let me if I can show it to you. These are wire protectors and it's a little horseshoe shape. It's got a channel 
at each of the ends and then a groove that goes around the rounded part and that's for the wire to sit into. And what it does, if I just had my wire going through my clasp like this, the movement of the bracelet w could possibly abrade the wire. So by using these little wire protectors, it just makes your bracelet that much stronger. And if you're using gemstones and Swarovski crystals, it would be a real shame if your wire broke and you lost something. So you just go through one of the channels and then back out through the other channel. And you can see how the wire just sits right in that groove. And then we're going to, I'm going to go through my clasp. Just like that. So now the wire isn't going to abrade ever. And next we're going to slide the end of the wire back through the crimp. And then take a minute and kind of fiddle with this and get your two wires. They usually want to cross, so get them so that they're parallel to each other. Leave yourself and get up there. Get back up there, clasp. <laughs> Leave yourself a little bit of slack because we're going to put a crimp cover over this to finish it off nicely. Now I've found the crimp covers I have are a little on the small side, so I'm going to have to use, um, I'm going to have to make sure and fold my crimp. So we're going to use the crimping pliers and I'm going to use the notch that has a U shape. And you could see when I squeeze that I should have one wire on either side of the crimp. Now that's not going to be holding this wire. What I'm going to do is take my chain nose pliers and grab that and give it a good squeeze. And always test, make sure that's nice and strong. And then you can use flush cut pliers, cut, oh, flush cut wire cutters, that is, to trim this little wire end. Now that is too big for my little crimp cover, so I need to fold it. And I was messing around and spending a lot of time messing, uh, fiddling with things, and I found if I grab one side of that crimp with a pair of pliers, and if somebody out there knows a better way to do it, let me know, but this was working for me. Grab the other side with another pair and bend them towards each other. That gave me a good head start towards folding, folding that crimp. And then I like my bent nose, chain nose pliers. They just seem to get in there better. And then just go in there. It can be tough to get a grip on it and fold it. I'm also going to, while I'm here, just close up the ends of that wire protector and them next to each other. And now, this is a crimp cover, and it does just what it says. It covers that flattened, squashed crimp and looks like a little bead there. And it kind of looks like a donut with a hole bitten out of it. And the best way I've found to manage these is to pick it up with chain nose pliers. Again, I like my bent nose ones here. Gently, don't squeeze hard or you'll close it. And then I just slide it over the crimp bead and now you can squeeze it and then it just looks like you've got a little bead there and now all you have to do is repeat the process on the other end attaching a jump ring instead of a clasp and your bracelet is done so I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope that you'll give this project a try 
Thanks so much for watching Keepsake Crafts videos. Here are a couple more that you might enjoy. Be sure to check out KeepsakeCrafts.net blog for lots more crafting and sewing ideas and inspiration. And also click subscribe to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you don't miss any of my videos. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good one. Bye-bye.